morning, everybody. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we just finished all, all of 2.4 uh, yesterday, so we're going on to 2.5. Now, there was uh, a couple questions people asked in the, the homework on the last question on 2.5, or I'm sorry, 2.4. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start with that. Before we jump into 2.5, uh, I want to go over piecewise functions for you, one of the last questions that are in here. Uh, just so you understand how to do that one. Uh, so let's go ahead. I'm going to pull up the 2.4 homework here, and I'm going to uh, start with, with the, this one here. So let me switch the screens here on this one now, and we're going to go to this question right here. So that one that you can see there, uh, we, I'm going to go through and do an example I'll do this example for you so that way you have an idea how to do it since there were a few questions on that. So this is one of those type of questions where you have to write the piecewise functions for this. And so you've got uh, these, this here, you can put in the, the function and then it, it says what X values you're going between. Well, these X values here, these are the, this is the easy ones to add because we can just get those directly from the graph itself. So it says the left piece of the function would be this piece on the left of the y-axis. And so we know that goes between uh, negative one and zero. So we'll do negative one and zero over there. So that's the x values for the left-hand piece. And then we have the x values for the right-hand piece here that's going to go from zero to three. Okay, so zero to three. Okay, so that's the first thing you'll do uh, is to get the X values for each of those. Okay, so next we want to go ahead and find the uh, equation for both of these lines. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can do that. You could actually write down the two coordinates and then use the slope formula in order to figure that out. However, there's an easier way on this problem. You can actually just use the graph itself to find the slope. Now remember that slope is the change in y over a change in x. So from this, to get from uh, the, this point negative one, three, down to the zero, zero, you would go down three and then one to the right, which means that the slope here would be negative three. And then I'm gonna put an x next to it. Now, if we're doing y equals mx plus b form, notice that this goes through 0, 0, which means that negative 3x would be the equation for the left-hand piece right here. So again, you go down 3. That's why it's negative, because you're going down 3, and then you're going 1 to the right. So that would give you a slope of negative 3x. And then the y-intercept would be 0. You could put the plus 0 in there, but it, uh, you don't need to. So negative 3x would be this one here. Now let's try the right-hand piece here. To get from this point to that point there. Uh, so this one, you're going to go up one and three to the right. So because this line is slanting to the, the right, that means it has a positive slope. So we go up one and three to the right. Well, that means that that's going to be a one-third that's here. So uh, for this one, we use this fraction, the, uh, the fraction uh, tool here. And then we put an X in there as well. Now, same idea here. Uh, this is going to end up being the, it goes through zero, zero. And so that's why we have uh, just one third X would be plus zero, uh, but that would be it uh, there. So we have negative three X, that's this piece right here. It goes between the X values of negative one and zero. And then we have one third X that goes between the values of zero and three. So that right there, that's all correct now. And so this is, that's how you're gonna do that particular problem. So it's one to go ahead and do one of those together before going to 2.5, just because I had a couple of people ask questions on this. So that'd be better to, to kind of go through that one uh, in class. Now, another one that I also would like to do uh, as well here, uh, is so I'm going to uh, 
So let's see, let me, let me go back to the, get rid of this and I'm going to, uh, let's see, also share, let me go to this other one here. So I'm gonna do a, another one for you uh, as well. So let's do that. get back to it here, hold on. Okay, so I'm gonna share uh, this next, I'm gonna do one more problem for you because it's a, it's a word problem. Okay, so, okay, let me do this one now for you. Okay, so this question we'll do uh, here. So this one, we got a telephone company problem. So this one I want to go through as well, because uh, I had another question on this. So you want to come up with, uh, for this telephone company offers a cellular plan, $34.99. It includes 250 anytime minutes plus 20 cents per minute for additional additional minutes. So it says the following function we have here. Uh, so this is basically the function that is that they're describing here. Uh, of how that's set up. So we just want to compute the cost for these. So this is another, uh, this is an application of an evaluate problem that has to do with these piecewise functions. So in order to do that, we're going to take a look at the minutes that are inside here. And we want to compare them to the, the minutes that are here in the conditional state. So it says right here that if the number is between zero and 250, then automatically the answer is going to be 34.99. So we have 175. 175 is less than 250, which means that automatically this is just going to be 34.99. And then so we see that's that would in fact be the answer. Okay. Uh, 290 is larger than 250. So you'd want to put 290 in for the X. Here. So you're going to do 0 0.2 times 290 and then minus 15.01. So we're so if we so if actually for these two bottom ones, these two bottom ones are both going to use the, the bottom equation for that. So if you do uh, 0 0.2 times 290, you're going to get 58, and then we're just going to subtract 15. 0.01 from that, and then we're going to get 42.99 we get for that one, and that's the correct answer we see there. For 251, you're going to take 251, again, we're putting it into the X, so 251 uh, times 0.2, and then we're going to subtract 15.01 there, and we get 35.19 on that. And that would be the correct answer on there uh, as well. So that would be the, the answer for this one. So it's kind of the same as we did yesterday. It's an evaluate type problem, even though we've got, uh, it's, an, it's, a, it's, a word, it's a word problem, yes, but all you're really doing is evaluating like we did yesterday on these piecewise functions. So that was another one I wanted to, to go over uh, with you. So, so now that we've kind of done all that, uh, those are the main ones that I wanted to, to go over uh, with you uh, were those because they're a little bit different than the ones that we did uh, in class yesterday. And so uh, now we can go ahead and continue with uh, 2.5 here. So uh, yeah, part of the lesson that we did yesterday was at the beginning of 2.4, we talked about the the library of functions, and we went through uh, all of those. So we had the uh, the first page of, the, of your notes uh, have all these different graphs drawn for you. We had like the identity function, square root function, absolute value, and so forth. We had all those on there uh, for you. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we can take those type of graphs and we can shift them left, right, up, or down, and that's what this is called here. So transformations are a way to make quick sketches of graphs without making tables and going through all that 
uh, hassle, uh, we can use these transformations instead. So we're going to say that uh, suppose that y equals f of x, that's considered an original function. And again, we're going to talk about one that we looked at in a in the previous session. So the section we did yesterday, 2.4, uh, we'll assume that f of x is one of those type of graphs. So it could be a absolute value, a square, square root, one of those kind of graphs. So here's what all the different transformations say. So if you see this, so for instance, maybe you might have x squared plus one, something like that. All that's going to do is take that x squared graph and move it that many units straight up. So if you have x squared and you have x squared plus one, then you just move the whole graph up one uh, unit. And that's what uh, this does here. Then we have f of x equals, or we have y equals f of x minus k. So that does a similar thing, except that now it's going to move the graph uh, k units uh, down. So kind of a similar thing. So you might have x squared minus one or something like that. That'll move that, that uh, down k units. Then if you've got something inside like this, so you might have like absolute value of x minus two, something like that. That's going to move that graph h units to the right. If you've got a plus inside, it moves it h units to the left. And of course, we'll do all, a bunch of examples. This will make more sense once we start doing examples. But I just want to explain what all these transformations are up front here. Now, we also have a case where you got a minus sign in front. So maybe you might have minus x squared or minus absolute value, something like that. If you have a minus out front, that's going to flip the graph over the horizontal axis. So it flips it over the x axis is what that's going to do. Uh, and if you have a negative inside, so like if you have uh, like negative x cubed or something like this, or negative square root of x, or uh, square root of negative x, something like that, that's going to flip the graph over the vertical axis. So they'll flip it over the y axis instead. So we'll take a look at what all these are a little bit later. Now, one thing I do want to talk about here is right down is this, this thing right here. We have a f of x. So it's considered a, a vertical stretch. So I'm just going to draw a kind of quick sketch over here for you um, just to go ahead and illustrate this. So if I have a, let's go ahead and draw the graph of uh, x squared graph here. I'm just going to draw, just do a quick sketch of that uh, here, and we'll do a x squared graph. So we'll just take a look at the normal, the regular right here. Y equals x. Y equals x squared. So we have an x squared graph here. Well, what's going to happen is if you put an A in front of the X, and then what happens is the graph is going to get skinnier. So actually, I didn't, let me redraw this because this is too, too small for you to see. I'm just going to draw it more like this instead. OK, so OK, so now I have this. I'm going to go ahead and plot some points here for you. Just going to illustrate again, just illustrating what this actually means. If you have that, let's draw that one. Okay, close enough. Okay, so this is the graph of y equals x squared. And so now I'm going to graph also. Let's suppose we have the graph of uh, y equals 2x squared. Okay, so instead, so instead of x squared, I have 2x squared here. So if I have 2x squared, what's going to happen is it's going to double all of the y values. So instead of it being at, at uh, negative 1, 1, I have negative 1, 2, like this. And then instead of having a 4, uh, negative 2, 4, I have negative 2, 8 instead. So it's going to be up here. So what's going to happen when I do that is the graph is actually going to get skinnier when I do that. So I have this, and then this is also going to 
uh, is this here. Uh, I have two eight up here. What's going to happen with that? So I have this is going to go up through there. Okay, so this is y equals 2x squared. So it's going to be like condensed more. And then I have also, uh, so this is the 2x squared and this is the original one. You know what? This is actually not working for me. So let me go ahead and I'm just going to use technology. That's going to be easier because that does, that looks, that drawing doesn't look very good. So let me go ahead and pull up uh, Desmos for you. Desmos is a graphing app. Uh, that's here. So I'm going to draw these for you, and that's going to make more sense when I do that, because I want to make this clear what that actually means. So let me pull this up real quick here so you can see the difference. This is, gonna be, this is what I should have done in the first place, but okay, so let me go ahead and pull this up. Okay. Let me change the screens and take you to Desmos instead to look better. All right, so here's here's Desmos, and I went ahead and drew these three for you, and they're color coded. The original one we have is this red line right here. This red line is your. So, I'll take away these. So here's the original one that we have. This is our y equal x squared graph. Now, if I put a two in front of it. What happens there is that the this changes and makes it uh, higher, or see how it's uh, actually more condensed than it was before. So we've got uh, right there the original one, but putting a two in front actually makes it look squished. So it's like stretching the whole thing out. It's kind of doing one of those. It's stretching it out in the y direction, and then we also, if I put a one half and then x squared in front of it. What that does, x squared, then that makes it look wider because it's taking all the original y values and it's going to be uh, multiplying all of them by one half instead. So then the graph, you can see what happens uh, when we have that. It's gonna look more like wider is what it looks like here. So that is what the, transformation does. Uh, excuse me a minute here while I blow my nose. Yeah, I've actually been sick all week. Uh, had a fever this week, so it hasn't been it hasn't been the best week, but um, hopefully I'm starting to get on the other side of this now. Hopefully, but yeah, all week all week week long I've been sick, blowing my nose all, constantly all day long. But uh, hopefully it's it's going to come to the end soon. Uh, so here we've got uh, we'll go back to the one that we had before. So let's go back to the 2.5 notes. All right, so and then we'll go ahead and we'll get rid of all this. This right here. Okay, so now that we have the idea of what this A value does, again, all that's going to do is it's going to uh, make the graph look wider or uh, shallower, depending on what it is. And I'm going to go through and do a homework problem for you on this a little bit later, uh, too, so you can understand how that works. We'll pull up a problem from the homework uh, so you can see uh, what's going on with that. So We'll get into that a little bit later. I want to talk about these sketches first. So we have a sketch y equals x plus one. And we have the original graph, this right here, this graph that's drawn. And I tried to pull in the graphs from the last section for you. So this is the graph of y equals x, uh, absolute value of x. And we see that it goes through these these key points here, 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1. So we have all those there. And we have a plus 1 inside. So if I look back up at the transformations, if you've got a plus inside, 
this says it's going to move that graph h units to the left. Well, my original graph is y equals absolute value of x. So this is going to move, this whole graph is going to move, does a plus, it's going to move one unit to the left. So this point that's at zero, zero, that's going to shift one place to the left. Now these points, these key points are also gonna move over one unit to the left, which means that this is what your graph is, your new graph is going to look like, okay? So that right there, that's it. It shifts one unit to the left. And that's gonna be it. That's the whole answer uh, that you would have. So that transformation, you're starting with the same graph. It shifts it one unit over to the left. And that's the new graph right there. If we're able to graph this without making a table. That's the whole idea. You don't want to make, uh, you don't want to ever do tables on these because using tables does not use the uh, transformations. Okay, so uh, when you do these problems on a test, for instance, you want to make sure that you don't uh, don't make tables because then you're not using transformations. So you shouldn't have to use tables when you use transformations. Let's take a look at another one. We have the, the same, again, the graph is the y equals absolute value. I'm sorry, not squared. It's absolute value x right here. Okay, so now we have that. This graph, we have a plus two on the end. So if you look back at, the, at your list of transformations, if you've got a, a plus k on the outside, that means it's gonna move this graph up that many units. So this transformation means that we're going to take this absolute value graph and we're going to shift it up uh, two units. So instead of this being at zero, zero, we're going to move it up to here. And that's going to be at zero, two. Then these points, these are also the other key point. And this is actually why uh, yesterday in class, I identified all of these coordinates. In 2.4, I identified these coordinates for you, these key points. This is actually why I did that, because these are the points that get shifted when you do transformations. So this point moves up two units, and this point moves up two units. So then you, you end up with this right here. And when we draw that, it's going to look like this. OK. So you have that, and that's, there, that's your final answer. This takes this graph, moves it up two units because of the plus two on the outside. Next one we're gonna do is a flip. Okay, so I have a, a negative on the outside of the absolute value. Now, what, uh, if you look back at the list of transformations, if you have a negative on the outside of your function, it's gonna flip the graph over the x axis, okay, over the horizontal axis or the x axis. So all the points that go like that, that go like this, what's going to happen is the, the negative essentially is going to multiply the y values by a negative. So instead of them being, so we know it's still going to go through zero, zero, that doesn't change here. But these are both at one, the negative on the outside will essentially change those into negative one. So the graph, that's why the graph flips over the horizontal axis. And so then the graph is going to open down uh, like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw that going down like that. So that's when the graph flips upside down and will look like this. up there for a second in case you need that for a minute or two. Uh, so um, it's possible that you might have more than one transformation combined together. So, so far we've done transformations separately, but almost always uh, they end up giving you several of them together. So that we're gonna move on to one like that. All right, so this has, um, a couple different transformations going on together. First of all, we've got a 
it moves it. So it's taken this graph. This is the original again, uh, y equal absolute value of x graph that we have here. And it's going to take this. It's going to move it. Uh, it's going to well, it's going to flip it over and move it one place to the left and up two units. So it kind of does a couple things. So uh, sometimes before you get to the final answer, it's sometimes good to do these in steps. And so I'm going to do that for you here and kind of do these in, in steps for you. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the flip first, which is what you should always do. So I'm going to do these in stages. So this is y equal negative absolute value of x. That's the first stage. I went ahead and flipped that upside down when I got that. Then, that, then once I have it flipped over, then what I can do is I can move it into the correct position. So I flipped it over first. And now I just want to take this, this graph. And this says that we're going to move it. I'm going to do both of these at the same time. It says we're going to move it one place to the left and up two units. So starting from here, I'm going to go one place to the left and up two units. This dot right here will correspond to the peak that I have at this one. Okay, so I have I have that. So it's going to basically just go down from here. So I flipped it over first, and then I moved it in, into position. One place to the left and up two units, which means that your graph is now going to look like this. Okay, so that would be, that's your final answer. So sometimes it's, it's actually good if you have a flip involved, a negative somewhere, it's actually better to take care of that one first and then you move it into position. So flip it over and then we move it into the, the correct position there. This is kind of like what I showed you earlier with Desmos. Uh, if you have a number in front like that, this is going to uh, make your graph look steeper. So this here, y equals absolute value of 2x is actually the same thing as we can take the absolute value of two and pull it outside. So actually it's two times the absolute value of x is what that is. So this is my original graph with my key points right here. So what's gonna happen is the y values are going to be multiplied by the two that you see out front. So zero, zero is not going to change. But instead of your, your, this point being at one, one, it's instead going to go to one, two. So it's going to be double what it was before. We can even do that with these key points, too, if you want. Two, two. So instead of being at two, two, it's going to be at two, four instead. So it's going to look, and this will be at negative two, four. So the, the answer that we get here, if you notice what happened on that, the graph, it's a, it's a type of vertical stretch. The graph got stretched. So as you pull it and stretch it out, it becomes narrower like this and becomes steeper. So you can see that is the difference between this one and the original one. The two out front, again, just doubles all of your Y values. So whatever key points that you have on the original one, you just multiply all those Y values by two and you'll get all the new points that you have on the new graph. So that's what this next one looks like. Again, it appears to be narrower uh, on that only because it's, it's being stretched. It's a type of vertical stretch we have because of the number you have on the outside there. All right, so next one we have, we're trying to do a, a bunch of different graph types because these are the type of ones that appear in the, the homework uh, for each of these. Okay. All right, so next one we got is a cube. This is what the original one uh, looks like here. We've got some key points that we can label in uh, for that. So we got this one and this one here.
So these are the key points I gave you. This is one one and this is two eight up here. So this is the graph of y equal x q. That's the original one. And we're going to use transformations. So this one's going to one half in front. What that means is that all the y values that you see in this in this picture here, they're going to be multiplied by a half. So the original point was zero zero. But then the next point, instead of it being at one one, it's going to be at one and one half instead. And then instead of it being at two eight, it's going to be at two four instead. Same thing's going to happen over here on this side for the negative x values. So that is going to give you a graph that looks like this. So the one half. This is a type of vertical compression. The graph kind of got squished a little bit. And so that's why it, it's not as high as the original one. This is, uh, has a slightly different scale with the number of the boxes we're using here than, than this one. So that's why it doesn't look completely squished. Uh, but that would be, again, your answer. The one half, you just take all the Y values of the original one and you multiply them by a half. That's how you, you generate the the, the uh, answer on that one. Okay, so we have a cube root. This is the original cube root of X graph. And again, it has these special key points here. What's going to happen on this case is all of the y values are going to be multiplied by three on the outside. So all these will be multiplied by three. So I have zero, zero is still the same. Instead of it being at one, one, it's going to be at one, three. And then this is going to be at negative one, negative three. Now the other one is going to be at eight, two. So instead of it being at eight, two, it's going to be at eight, six. So let's go ahead and we have to go outside this graph a little bit here, but we're going to go over to over eight and we're going to go up to six, uh, which is going to be right here. So that is eight and six to get to that point. Do the same thing over here. We'll go eight units to the left and we're going to go down six units until you get something here. So the graph we have is going to look like this. So all the, the y values here, all of them got multiplied by three. So this is another type of vertical stretch. The graph got stretched out vertically. That's why you see it written that way. there for a minute in case you need to get that down. Uh, so now we've done, we've done uh, a couple different graphs here. We've done the, the ones where you have the number out front like that. So now we're going to kind of move away from that and start looking at this other transformations working with uh, different functions. So we've done, we've looked at absolute value and some of these other ones, but uh, we let's take a look at a, a type we haven't gone through yet is the square root graph here. So this is the square root x graph that we have there. We have these uh, these key points. Okay, so we've got zero zero one one and four two. Those are our key points. These are all coming from Section 2.4. Section 2.4, I went ahead and gave you all the key points there. So this is just recreating that from uh, those 2.4 I gave you last time. So this doesn't have any flips or anything going on with it. So it's going to look just like this. This graph is going to move two places to the right and down one. So all these points that you see here, they're going to move two places to the right and down one. So from zero, zero, two places to the right and down one will be right here. 
this point, if I move it two places to the right and down one, it'll be right on the X axis. So it'll be right here. And if you take this point, uh, we're gonna, again, all these move two places to the right and down one. So if I move this two places over, I'm gonna be at six and then it's gonna be at one. So if I go over six, one is going, uh, it's gonna be right here over six up one. So my graph looks like this right here. So you just take every one of these key points and you move it two places to the right and then down one. Because inside, the inside one, that's the left and right movement. So if you see a minus inside, that means you move it to the right. If you see a minus on the outside, that means you move it down. Okay, so that's what happened there. All these key points move two places to the right and down one. And that's where you get the new uh, coordinates. Okay, so we have another one that has a negative out front. So I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do this initial step first. So let's draw first y equals negative absolute value of x. So I'm going to, I want to do this part first. Okay, so I'm going to do negative absolute value x. So it means that you're going to take all this and you're going to flip it over. It's going to flip over the vertical axis. So what's going to happen is because it's flipped over, that means it's going to go through these points now. And the graph is going to look like, like this here. So now the graph is going to open to the left instead of the right because the negative on the outside, I'm sorry, you know what? I did the wrong thing. That is not correct. I just did there. That would be true for uh, if I had a negative on the inside of the X, that would do that. But this negative is on the outside. So instead what we're doing is we're actually Flipping the graph over the y axis. So it's going to go down like this instead. So apologize there. That's that's the correct way to draw a negative x, negative square root of x. So the, the one I did earlier where it opens up to the left, that would only be if the negative was on the inside of the square root, I would have that. But since the negative is on the outside, that's why it flips down like that. So it's a flip over the horizontal axis, not the vertical one. So that's so this is what the correct way if there's a negative on the outside. So what I'm gonna do next is take this graph with these key points. I'm gonna move it one place over to the left because there's a plus sign inside here. So one unit to the left and then down two units. So from the starting point here, zero, zero, I'm gonna move it one place to the left and down two units. So that starting point now, it becomes this one. Now, all these other key points that you see here, you're gonna move all of them one place to the right and then down two. So for this, originally I had a point right here. If I move it one place to the left and down two units, that means it's gonna appear here. And then the last one, if I move it two places to the right and down two, it's going to end up right here. So that would be uh, your answer. Okay. So it got flipped over first. We flipped it over and then we moved into the position. You should always do that. You should always flip the graph first before you move it. So we, uh, we flipped it first. We moved it one place to the left and then down two units here. Now I'm gonna take a, a break with this now to show you what a homework problem looks like on these. So we're gonna come back to this, but I wanna first go to the uh, 
what one of these questions looks like in my open map. Okay. Uh, this is going back to one that we, we did by hand, but I want to go through and do one of these for you by going through all the steps because it is a little bit more here with the homework. So I just want to go through one of these so that way you kind of understand what's going on. It says graph the following function using techniques of shifting, compressing. Okay, so basically we're using uh, transformations. So it says start with the graph of the basic function of y equal x squared and show all the stages. Be sure to identify at least three key points. Uh, oh, there's a typo I'm going to fix there. Find the domain and range of the function. So y equals x squared plus one. First of all, it's asking you for which transformations are needed to, to graph the function y equal x squared plus one. Choose the correct answer below. So if we look at all these here, the plus one on the end means the graph must be shifted up one unit. So the graph should be shifted vertically up by one unit. Uh, that's going to be this one right here. And so that's, that's what we want to answer for that. If the plus one's on the outside, so you're moving it up vertically one unit. Fill in the missing coordinates of the points that lie in the graph of y equals x squared and the corresponding points that lie in the graph of y equals x squared plus one. Okay, this, what you want to do here is we want to fill in what the points of the original graph is. So essentially what this is asking you for is the key points from the graph of y equals x squared. You can find these by either looking at the graph I gave you in 2.4, or you can plug in the number into the function to get the corresponding point. If I put negative two into here, negative two squared is gonna give you four. Zero into here is gonna give you zero squared is just zero. And then two squared is gonna give you four. So if you look at the original graph I gave you, in 2.4, these would be the coordinates of, of, the, of the key points that are on it. It's not all the key points I gave you, but it's uh, three out of the five I originally gave you. Now, what it's asking you to do here is they want you to indicate the points on your new graph, y equals x squared plus one. Well, all this is gonna be doing is it's gonna add one to your y values here, because remember what this is doing, it's shifting the graph up one unit, all right? So if I shift it up one unit, that means that this is this new coordinate's gonna be at negative two, instead of four, it's gonna be at five instead. This next point here, instead of at zero, zero, it's gonna be at zero, one instead. And this is gonna be at two comma five, okay? So that's gonna be, as you see here, that would be the answers for each of these. Okay, so you're just writing the coordinates of the new graph that you have. Uh, let's do let's do domain and range after we draw this one. So we want to use the graphing tool to graph the equation. First of all, we have a x squared here. So x squared means that we have to use the quadratic tool. So we're going to use this middle tool here. Uh, we all we always want to start with the for this we're going to start with the point zero one. So we want to start with the y-intercept. So I have that. I'm clicking on that one, and then what I do is I'm just going to go have it go through the points that I answered earlier, the negative two five or in this case two five. So I'm going to go over two and up five right here. And that right there is going to be uh, my answer. So over two and up five, uh, that would be it for that one. So now I can answer domain and range. And now domain always for a square, x squared graph, the domain is always going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, that's always the way it is with, with this. In fact, Really, all the graphs you're doing in this section here, uh, if it has an x squared in it, x squared or x cubed, that's going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. And we see here that this graph is going to get wider and wider. So as it gets wider, it's going to use more x values in each direction. So that's why our domain uh, is negative infinity to positive infinity. However, the range, that's why I wanted to draw this graph first before I did domain and range. The range, we're going to get off the graph itself. 
the lowest y value this graph uses is one. And that doesn't, it's going to go all the way up to positive infinity. So my, uh, I'm going to have to put a bracket here at one. And that's going to go to infinity. I'm going to make sure we change this one to a, a parenthesis there. So that, that one's correct. And this one is correct on each one. So that would be how you want to do that particular question. So there's a couple questions that have all these parts like this that have you fill in the table. So I just wanted to explain the table for you here, uh, just because it's not exactly like we did in the notes, but this is what the homework has for us. So we, that's why I wanted to go through one of these for you, just to understand. Uh, and we'll probably have a chance to go through. So actually, you know what, now that we have that complete, I'll probably go through another one of those for you uh, as well, a little bit later. But first, I want to go ahead and finish the notes first. And then if there's time, we'll come back and do another one of these a little bit later, just so you understand how that works. OK, so we've done this one. Let's move on to this one right here. OK, now this here, notice that this is different because we've got the order is switched around with our the x that we have here. Now, all the transformations I showed you earlier in this section, all those have x plus or x minus sign. But this is different here because we've got a number that comes first. So I want to do a little algebra before we jump into uh, trying to draw this one. First thing what I want to do is I want to switch the order. And I'm going to make this negative x plus 4. And I have plus 2 on the end there. Uh, this negative. I'm going to factor out because again, I want, not only do I want the X to come first, but I want whatever is here, I want that to be a positive X because that's what my transformations work off of. It works off of X plus or minus something. So for this, I'm going to factor out, essentially I'm factoring out negative one from there. That's gonna look like that. So I have a positive X, but that's gonna switch the sign and make it minus four. I still have the plus two on the outside there. Okay, so this is the graph. This is the I mean, this is the equation that I want to graph now. Okay, because it now is written in the correct order. I got the x that comes first. Also, what we notice inside is we have a negative inside the the square root. So uh, this graph is the graph of y equal square root of x. Because I have a negative inside, what I want to do first. And I did this earlier. Uh, we talked about that if you do y equal uh, square root of negative x, what happens is that graph is going to flip over the vertical axis and it's going to look like this. So that is different from the previous example we did. The previous example had the negative on the outside and that flipped it over the horizontal axis. But now if we put the negative on the inside like we have here, we got a negative right here on the original one. Now that one is going to uh, be flipped over the vertical axis. It's going to open up like that. So I want to take, this is the graph I'm going to shift is that one. Now the transformations that you're doing, you're going to, you're going to work off of whatever is inside the parentheses. So inside the parentheses, I have a minus four, which means that this graph that I drew here, the one that opens up to the left, that's going to shift four places to the right and tuning itself. So whenever you're inside something like that, the, the, it's always going to move opposite direction of the sign you see inside here. In other words, if I have a minus, instead of moving it in the minus direction or negative direction, I'm going to move it instead to the positive or to the right. Okay, so if you have a minus here, that means you move it to the right. So this place at zero, zero, we're going to move it four places to the right. Uh, at, I'm not going to make a dot right there just now, and up two. So I'm um, going to go four to the right and up two. So I want to do that all, all at once here. Okay, so I'm doing all these, these two transformations. Essentially, I'm doing them at the same time. I'm taking all the points that I see on this drawing here, we want to move them four places to the right and up two units. That's what I did right there. Okay, so next point here, I have 
this one, this point is going to move. Uh, again, I want to do the same thing. I want it to move it four places to the right and up two units. So if I move it up to here, it's going to be at three comma three. So it's going to go right there. And then this one, so move four places to the right and up two units. That means it's going to end up on the x axis. It's going to hit at four right there. And so then my graph is going to uh, look like this. So to come down and go through these three points and look like that. And that's going to be what your uh, final answer is. That's the same thing as the original equation that we had. But again, in order to graph that, I had to do a little algebra first. So we want to switch the order and make sure the X always comes first. And we want to make sure we always have a positive X in front because that's how the transformations work. All the transformations had X plus or X minus something inside. So it has to be specifically in that order in order for us to, to graph this one correctly. Okay. Leave that up, leave that up there for a second. Uh, let's see. So uh, let's now go on to the next question. All right. Now, uh, this one here, I'm going to do a couple things to this graph first. Okay. First of all, this is the graph of y equals x squared. All right. So I want to draw. First, I'm going to do a couple of steps first before I get to my, my final answer. First thing I want to do is I want to draw in the graph of, uh, I want to use the negative. So the negative, let's draw that one first. So if I want to draw, I'm going to do y, y equals negative x squared. I'm going to ignore the one half and I have a negative and I have a square. So I'm just going to do this one first, negative one half x squared. So what that's going to do, it's going to flip the graph over the vertical axis. So that means that the, these points are going to flip down like this and they're going to be opening down like that. So I, all I did was just flip all that over So we'll, we'll go down like this, close enough. Okay. And so that graph got flipped over the vertical axis. But the one half, that's going to take all those y values and do them by uh, and multiply them by a half. So these points that I have here, I'm going to multiply all of them by a half. So and I'll and I'll draw that one on here since I can make that look a little bit more accurate. All right, so essentially you can also do this all on one step if you want to. You can take all these key points here in the original one and you can multiply all of them by negative one half, then it would do everything all in one step. So that might be a little bit easier uh, to do all that one step. So taking the original point was at, originally it was at one. If I multiply one by negative one half, it's gonna come down to here. This point up here was at four. If I multiply that by negative one half, it's going to come down to negative two. Same thing here. I have it at positive four. That's going to go into negative two if I multiply four by negative one half. So this right here, this graph that I'm drawing, this one is y equals negative one half x squared. That's the one I just did there. So this graph, now that I've I've come up with the right graph. Now all I have to do is move it into the correct position. So any kind of numbers you see out here, you should always do that part first before you move it into the new position. So it'd be easier that way. So I first did negative one half x squared. So now I just need to move that graph. Okay, this is gonna be two places to the right and then down one unit. Okay, so originally it started at zero, zero. That point's gonna move two places to the right and then down one unit to here. But these other points are also gonna move, each of those will move two places to the right and down one unit. Let's do these, for, I'll do this one here. 
this, this point right here is going to move two places to the right and down one. So it's going to be at 4, negative 3. So 4, negative 3 will be right here. This point is going to move two places to the right and down one unit. So it's going to be at 0, negative 3. So it's going to be down below there. Now the other ones, the halves, you can actually just recreate those right here. Or you could still, the one half, move two places to the right and down one unit. So it still ends up in the same spot that you have there. Same with this, moves two places over and down one unit to this location right there. So then it, this is going to be the, that's the final answer, what this one would look like. So again, you always want to consider any kind of numbers on the outside. Go ahead and take care of that first. And once that's done, then you can move it into the correct position like we have here. And that's going to be your, uh, your final answer. All right, now let's do a, a little harder one on the homework. So I want to jump back to one of these homework questions for you and do another one. This is probably the one of the harder ones that you'll have to do. Uh, with working it online in my open mind. But before we get to that, uh, the first example again, um, first example of these notes, I assume. So the first example I did was this one right here. And so that was a question in the chat. So uh, this here was the first example I did. Uh, this was uh, y equal absolute value of x plus one. The original graph was that. So is that the question that you're referring to? Oh, okay, that's the one we wanted. Okay, so yeah, that one, we just moved it one place over to the right because of the plus one that you have right here. So we just shifted it over one place to the right and then we, we redrew the new, the new points here. So all those, we just move them over one place to the left to get uh, this one here. So uh, I'm going to do one of these questions from the homework again for you, uh, because this one again is a little bit more complicated than the other other example I did earlier. It's one of these ones where you have to fill in a table and, and go through all that. So that's why I want to uh, show this one specifically for you, because usually I have a lot of questions on this type of problem. So I want to go ahead and show you an example of it first, and that might minimize some questions that you may have on this one. So let's go ahead and we're going to go to the my open math question. All right, so you should be able to see this one here. We've got uh, y equals x minus four, x plus four quantity cubed plus three. So it's asking you for now. Um, so this is a little bit more complicated one than we did earlier. Which transformations are needed to graph the function y equal? Okay, so choose the correct answer below. Okay, so remember the base graph is y equal x cubed that it shows here. And it says, uh, we want to select which one. So if I look at this, that's saying we're going to move the graph four places to the left and up three units. So that's what I want to pick as my answer on here. It's going to move four places to the, to the left and up three units. So horizontally shifted four units to the left and shifted really, yeah. So the first one right there, that's gonna be the answer. All the other ones are not correct because it's shifting down or to the right. So the first answer choice just so happens to be the correct answer here in this case. All right, now we're gonna move on to the next one. Okay, so this one here, uh, you want to draw, you want to, you want to take the coordinates of the XQ graph. So you want to go back to the key points I gave you in the uh, for, uh, section 2.4, and you want to write those key points here. So you're just listing the, the coordinates for those. So negative uh, one, even cubit. You take negative one and cubit, you're going to get negative one. You take zero and cubit, you're going to get zero. You take one and cube it, you're going to get one. So these are just the coordinates of the key point I gave you. You can either get those off the graph itself, or you can just go ahead and find them by plugging that into the x value. Okay, 
Now, next you're going to, you wanna, okay, so this is, this is something where I would suggest that you actually do this by hand first and then type the points in that way. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna open up a blank page for you and we're gonna go take a look at that blank page. We're actually gonna graph this guy. Actually, you know what, let's, well, we don't need to do that. Let's just go ahead and graph it down here first then we can come back up in here and fill these in. I think that's gonna be easier. So uh, we wanna graph y equal x cubed. So that x cubed graph, it's moving four places to the left and up three units. Now, if I take a look at the, the tools I have here, this time the cube graph, we wanna use this middle tool here, the one that has the, the bend in the graph. We wanna do that. Now notice that the first point, one of the points that's on here and this little button, that's the, uh, that's actually the, the point where it says zero, zero, it moves four places to the left and up three units. So four places to the left and up three units would be right here. So we're going to hit this tool and then four places to the right up three units and we're gonna click on that. And then the graph is going to look like this. So if I, so basically I would go from this starting point here, it would go one to the right up one unit. That's what it would do. Uh, so we kind of did that earlier in the, so the, the original points I'm showing you that we started with, let me go back to that one and show you what that earlier example was before in my notes and we'll come back. So we did this example earlier where you had the X cube graph. This is what the normal X cube graph looks like right here. We just took all these points and we moved them four places to the right and up three units. So the only ones I'm looking at are particularly these coordinates right here, four places to the right and up three units. And I just did that for this one as well, four places to the right, up three units. And then they did the same with this one, four places to the right, up three units. So that's actually how I got the graph of that. I used these original key points from that one and I shifted them. So now let's go back to the test question, the homework question here. So now I have this right here. So what you wanna do is you wanna look at where these original points shifted to. Well, first of all, zero, zero, that gets shifted over to uh, four, three. So that's gonna be right here at four comma three. That's where that one shifts to. Now the negative one, one, that was the one that was originally down over here. Now that one got shifted over to this point right here, which is gonna be at three, two. So three comma two. Oh, so, you know, I wrote, sorry, I put that in the wrong spot. This is three, two, here. Three, two there. This one is, this one is actually gonna be this point right here. So five, four is where that one shifts to. So again, it may help to draw the graph first and then put these in. Now, another way that you could have also gotten to these same points here is we know that every point gets shifted four places to the right and up three units. So if this is the original one, you're gonna add four to the X value and then add three to the Y value. So that's another way you could get these same points as well. Zero, zero, we add four to the X value and add three to the Y value, you get four, three. One, one, add four to the X value and you get five, add three to the Y value and you get four. That's another way you could have gotten those same points uh, as well. So you can either get them off the graph itself or you can actually phys uh, use basically just add whatever it is there, you can add that to it and get the same values as well. All right, now domain, for this negative infinity to positive infinity, it's using all of the X values because this will get wider and wider and use more use up more X values. The range, now the range, that's gonna go all the way down to negative infinity and go all the way up to positive infinity. And so this one is gonna be also infinity, uh, negative infinity, some type here, negative infinity to infinity, okay? And so that would also be your range 
uh, on that one. Okay, and that would, that would be correct for uh, each of those. And uh, for this one, uh, for that, uh, actually, uh, uh, I made a mistake for you guys. I apologize on this problem. Uh, plus four means I, I said earlier that it moves to the left and I actually moved it to the right instead. So this graph actually needs to move uh, over the other direction. It's moving, it's got to move. And so these are wrong as well. So I apologize for that. I want to make sure make this right before I end this lecture. Got to move four places to the left and up three units. So from here, zero, zero, four places to the left and up three units would be right there. So then the graph is going to look like this instead. So it's got to move to the left uh, and because of the plus right here. So I moved it to the right by mistake. It's got to go to the left because the plus inside here. You're always moving in opposite direction of what's inside the parentheses. So you're moving it to the left. So now that we have this, since we move it to the left, it's actually a type of subtraction. So you're going to subtract four from the x value, and then you're going to add three to the y value. So this is going to actually be at negative four comma three. That's the right one there. If you subtract four here, that's going to be negative five comma. If you add three to the y value there, it's going to become two. And we see from the graph here, negative five, two is where that goes through. The other one you can read off the graph as well, negative three comma four, just like that. Negative three comma four would be that one. So now this is correct. So apologize for that. But the plus four means you move it to the left instead. Okay, so hopefully you won't get confused by that. Uh, now, everything else on this one uh, is correct. But again, I just wanted to show that last example for you uh, because, uh, again, it's, it is a little bit different than what we did than how we did them in the notes. So I just want to make sure you have a clear example on how you want to do that. But again, we're just using the key points from this. The main thing is we have to move it to the left instead of the right. So. There's only two type of problems in there where you have to draw tables. And those are the two examples I showed you from the homework. The other ones, there's either gonna be a multiple choice on there, or you might be able to use the graphing tool itself and just draw the graph in there without making tables and going through all that. So uh, there's, uh, you know what, actually there is one more that we have to do that. So let me show you, uh, let me show you one more example before we go today. So let me just go back to the one more question we'll do from the homework. Okay, so we got a square one again, but we got a, a number in front like this. So this is a problem that I, I wanna, this is the last problem that we'll do for today. Uh, so this one here, uh, we've got the y equal x square graph. So it says, which transformations are needed? Um, it's a three on the outside because it's larger than then one, this is gonna be a vertical stretch. So you wanna find one that's being stretched, vertically stretched by a factor of three. It's also moving to the right because it's a minus three and we're moving it up one unit. So this one here should be shifted to the right three units, vertically stretched by a factor of three and shifted vertically up by one unit. This is gonna be the answer on that one. So that's how you wanna answer that. We're going back to the X squared graph. So we did this one earlier and we had these same key points, which I'm just gonna type in for you. Um, so negative two, four, zero, zero, and two, four. These come off of your graph in 2.4. And that's what the original base graph is going to be. Now, this type of graph, okay, uh, we are taking the graph of, Essentially, we're taking this and we're x squared and we're moving it to this one. This is one that I do want to show you a do this on paper first. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you this one on paper. So let's go back to this one. And this is the original graph that we had. We had y equals three times x minus three squared plus one. Okay, so this what I'm gonna do first is 
here's my original graph that uh, we have this larger. This is the original graph that I gave you of the x squared graph, which I'll go ahead and I'll show. So I'm going to do this one on paper for you. That way it'll be easier for us to graph later. So here's the original key points. This is y equals x squared. I want to find out what the graph of, I want to do this one first. Uh, y equals, I'll do that one down here. We have more room. I want to show you y equals 3x squared instead, what that one looks like. So that's going to take all the y values and it's going to multiply them by three. So instead of it being at one, one, I'm going to be at one, three instead. Instead of it being at two, four, it's going to be instead at two, twelve. That's going to be way up here for each one of these. Okay, so two, twelve, it'll be on each. So the graph, it's this is what the three x squared graph is going to look like. Okay, so this is the graph of 3x squared. This is the graph that's going to move three places to the right and up one unit. So I'm going to take all the key points that I have here and I'm going to shift them over. So let's put them all on here. That's going to move three places to the right and up one unit. So notice I did the the three on the outside, I wanted to do that one first. And now we move these points three places to the right and up one unit here. So in fact, what I'll do is I'm going to put this line down below since we have to go up higher. All right, so zero, zero moves three places to the right and up one unit. That's a zero, zero. Now this one, this one moves three places to the right and up one unit as well. That's going to move to this position right here. So we move it three places to the right, which means it'll be at four and then up one unit. So it'll be at uh, four, four there. And that's exactly where this spot ends up at. The other one moves three places to the right, one, two, three. And up one unit, so it's going to be at two, four, just like this. Now that's actually all the points that we actually need here. We don't need the two top ones because the way this graphing tool works is we just need to. to these three points are actually sufficient for us to get our graph. Okay, so we know the graph's going to look like this. We really only need those three key points because that's actually what's shifted over here. Now let's write down the coordinates of these new points that we have. We have three, one, we have four, four, and then we have, this one is two and four. The reason why I'm writing down these key points for you is because these are the ones that are gonna go into the table that you have to type in. So the original key points that you had right here, these three, they move to these three that you have here. So the original one that was at negative one, one, that got shifted to two comma four. The original one at zero, zero got shifted to uh, three comma one, three comma one, got to put the one there. So three comma one is where this point moves to. Now let this point over here, that was at one and one. Now that got shifted to four, four. So now I know what points to enter in. So now I can jump back to my homework question and fill it in. So I'm going to type these, get, just write these off the graph I just did. So I have, that's going to be at, uh, uh, so this one, Ash, well, you know what, actually, uh, sorry about that. This one was negative two, four. So instead of using those two other points we use, uh, but what we're doing is on this, let's jump back to that again, because I forgot that that was the other one that we had. Uh, so let's go back to the blank page that we had. These points right here. Um, so this point, we move it three places to the right and up one unit. So we do want to go ahead and 
So let's here, let's go ahead and remove this graph for a second here. It's not the exact key points they wanted. So let's go ahead and draw these other ones in here. All right. So these up here were originally at 12. They get shifted up one unit, so they're going to be at 13. And so this is going to be at way up here. And this next one is going to be at five and all the way up here at 13. So that's where these points, so th these are the points that wanted you to shift, not, not, the, not these middle ones. They actually wanted you to indicate these points. So that's going to be at 113. And this one's going to be at 513. And that's the ones they actually wanted you to, to show there. So 113 and 513. And this one's still the same at 3, 1. So these are the actual points they wanted you to shift. So these points right here up there got shifted uh, three places to the right and up one unit. So these right here would be the three points that you're going to put on that homework question and my open math. So let's put those in there now. All right, so we got uh, on here, this is 113 and this was 513. And this one was still gonna be at uh, three comma one. Okay, so that's, that's the points that we have on that. Now for graphing purposes, we're going to select the parabola tool and you want to indicate you want to click on three comma one first three comma one because that's the bottom most part of the graph that's the one you want to start with when you use this so then you're just going to move it into either 513 or 113 i'll use uh so 513 would be uh right there that's uh five comma thirteen and so now we have our graph is going to be drawn just like this. Your domain is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity again on these. And the range is going to be from the smallest y value, that's one. So it's going to go from one to infinity. So one is the smallest y value, it goes all the way to infinity. Okay, so that's going to be your answer on this one. So this is the most complicated one that you'll see uh, in the homework, but that I wanted to make sure we go through one of those for you just so you know how uh, these are answered. So you're using the original key points here. We translated them by our graph to these, and that's what they want you to type in. So you're typing in the, whatever your answer is, that's the points that you're typing in for your answer on that one. We have our graph here, and so this problem is complete. So right now, uh, sorry I went a little long today, but I just wanted to make sure we covered that problem uh, for you. So now, uh, any anybody have any questions before we go today? All right, well, uh, we'll just end this now and uh, I'll see all you guys tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day.